Hello Python programmers. So in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a spooky looking filter. I guess we can call that a filter using OpenCV Python. So first of all, let's see that what is the final output that you can expect from this video so that you can decide whether you want to watch this video or not. So let's go to the folder, shift plus mouse, right click, open PowerShell window here and let me open the file. Okay. Okay, so now let me come into frame and here you can see that this is me and actually this is my new mic. Okay, so this is the filter that we'll be creating and actually here you can see that I'm going away from my mouse, uh, from my mic so my audio is not audible that much. So here you can see that this is the spooky looking filter that we'll create. Okay, so let me close this and let's start off with this video so first of all let's start off by installing the packages that we require so we need python uh, sorry opencv python so obviously you need to install python first and if you don't know that i'll provide a link in the description you can watch that video to know how to install python so first let's install the package that we require so we need only one package which is opencv python so uh, okay open cv python press enter and this package will be installed for you for me the requirement is already satisfied so yep let's go to our editor so that we can start writing our code but before writing the code let me first explain you that what is the blueprint or what is the concept behind this project so actually i was not intending on creating this project i was working on motion detection using OpenCV. So for that you have to take one reference image and then uh, just compare all the uh, live images or all the real time images so that you can see whether there is a movement or not. I guess this is what physics also says that if you want to see whether there is a movement or not you have to compare that with a reference uh, point like a person on a train sees the uh, trees moving but if a person outside the train sees then the trees are, st uh, are still but that train is moving so it all depends on from what reference point you are seeing so enough of the physics uh, let's understand this project so so what this is doing is we have first of all converted our live image into grayscale and then we are taking one reference image this is why i moved out of the frame when I started the uh, program because I want to make sure that the program is taking the background as a reference image and when I introduce myself or anything in front of it you can see uh, it was creating a grayish black very spooky looking effect and this is what we'll be using in our motion detection also so I just saw this and I thought that why not create a spooky looking filter and let's have some fun. Okay, so let's start off with creating the project now. So we have installed the package and let's move to our editor straight away. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is obviously to install the packages. So uh, we'll import two packages. First is OpenCV which is CV2 and then we'll require time so that we can close our window i'll show you that how things will happen but we need these two packages then we'll create a video variable let's say video uh, it should be video okay and this video package will have uh, the capture data from our webcam now i have created separate video of how you can capture the uh, live images from mobile phone or from ESP32 Wi-Fi cam or many things but in this video we'll be simply using our webcam because it's simple and I want to focus more on creating the filter rather than experimenting on the input so we'll be using the webcam only so we'll use the cv2.video capture method here and we'll store that into this video variable then let's first create a first frame variable uh, which will initially store none because this will store the uh, first frame which will be used to compare all the later frames and then create that spooky looking 
I'm many times saying that filter. Okay, so uh, this reference image will be used to uh, compare all the later images. Then we'll create our uh, infinite loop because we want to run an infinite loop because we all know that videos are just fast moving images. So we'll be capturing the images from our uh, webcam and then moving them on a very fast rate and it will translate them into images. I have explained all of the things in our previous video of OpenCV. I'll provide the link below. Okay, uh, now let's extract the data which is inside our uh, video variable. So we'll create this check and frame. So uh, video dot read. And then what we'll do is we'll convert this image into grayscale. So many people ask that why do we convert the images in grayscale? Why cannot do the object detection on the live images? So the reason is that when we get the images from our webcam or from any input, it is usually colored and colored image have many colors and their shades. So it takes lots of processing time as well as processing power to detect any object or any feature in that image but if we convert them into grayscale then we have a few shades of gray and then we can do object detection very easily okay so this is the simplest reason i can think of so let's create a gray variable and then convert our live coming images into grayscale okay so now we have used this cvt color uh, method of python the first parameter is the frame the input that we are getting from our webcam and the second is cv2 dot color bgr is blue green red to gray and simply gray is gray okay now the second thing that we'll do is we'll do the gaussian blur now why are we doing the gaussian blur we are doing the Gaussian blur to somewhat smoothen the edges so that we can reduce the processing time and the processing power to do the motion detection. Okay. Okay, so now we have done the Gaussian blur. Now, there are many methods in OpenCV to do the blur. I have created a video in which I have done the phase blur and I have I guess used the median blur yeah yeah I guess I've used the median blur for that video but here we are using the Gaussian blur and it has these four parameters actually three parameters this is a tuple inside the the first parameter is the gray image the second third and fourth parameter are the tuning parameters so I'll provide the link from which you can uh, understand this Gaussian blur and what are this tuning parameters okay now let's go on to the next thing which is to get the first frame now we have specified the first frame variable as none now so now we'll use this uh, variable so if uh, first frame is none then what we'll do is we'll specify first frame as our gray image so the first frame that the webcam catches after the program is run will be stored into this first frame and it will be used to compare with the further coming images to do the motion detection and here to create that spooky looking image or whatever you can say okay so now the thing is done here so what we'll do is we'll write the continue so that the loop starts again okay we are not doing pass because we don't want the further instructions to be executed we are writing continue so that our loop starts again this while true loop starts again okay so let's stop a bit here and let's understand that what is happening so let's say that the first image from our webcam is captured in this video variable and then goes through this uh, while loop and then is readed and then stored in this frame variable and then it is converted into grayscale image and then blurred using the Gaussian blur and 
as in it is the first image it is stored in the uh, in the first frame variable after that the loop is run again and again the next image is uh, extracted from our webcam and then it is again done gray and then uh, gaussian blur and this time this is not the first image the first frame is already saved as gray so this is not uh, none so this if condition won't be executed now what we'll do is we'll use the absolute difference method of opencv to compare these two images to compare whether some uh, pixels are missing from previous to this image or not okay so what we'll do is we'll create a delta uh, frame and then we'll do cv2 actually let me write first then i'll explain you that what is happening okay so we have used the cv2 to do cv2 dot abs differ method of uh, opencv and it accepts two parameter the first is first frame the first frame and the second is the second frame so basically we are using two values and then they are compared i don't think there is much to explain here then actually our work is done now there is nothing much left other than showing the image so we'll use im dot show and uh, let's name this as gotcha i don't know why i love this phrase and uh, we'll display the delta frame here okay and then let's specify the key variable so that we can close our uh, kinter window yeah opencv uses the kinter window for uh kinter for creating the gui kinter window i was saying cv2 dot wait key actually i guess this uh k should be capital okay and if the key is equal to equal to order of q or if i press uh the character or the key q then this uh window this kinter window will be terminated okay so this is like an exit statement then this uh while loop will be broken then our last task is to do video dot release and cv2 dot just a second cv2 dot destroy all windows okay so let me run the program and although i have a history of not running the program in one go but let's try okay so it actually run and here you can see that the first image was taken as reference image and then here you can see this spooky image of mine here you can see that this this yeah this is my first image and here you can see the mic also and this is my real image okay so yep this was the video actually let me close this okay so this is it this was the project that i have promised you at the starting of the video now this video was the part of our open cv series in which i have started from cat face detection to like face detection i nose detection and then using the mobile camera for face detection then using the esp32 wi-fi cam which was an independent arduino uh, small chip like thing which can be used at remote places and then it can be used on robots actually i have used on my robots on uh, on my robot only i was working on my final year project so this video was a part of that playlist and in the next video we'll actually see how we can do motion detection okay so meet in my next lecture bye bye